We're rolling. Here we go. We are officially the 29th of November, 2022, 12.45 in the afternoon. 45 degrees, but not windy, so it's tolerable outside. Uh, sunset set, 425. Don't like that, but it's that time of the year. And, what, we got less than a month before the sun uh, starts setting later? Because December 21st is the winter solstice, but the sunlight, you know, you gain roughly a minute of sunlight a day. And, of course, the further north you are, you know, the less sunlight you have. That's just physics. Um, but, anyway, COVID update. Um... I'm feeling fine. I don't really have any symptoms. Uh, it is day four. I was exposed Friday. Friday night. So Friday to Saturday. Saturday to Sunday. Sunday to Monday. Monday, day four. So yeah, tomorrow I'll go for uh, another test. And um, I'm just going to stay uh, safe. I'm just going to stay distant from people up until next Monday. And, um, I don't think I, I don't think I have it to be honest with you at this point. I don't think so. But then again, knock on plastic, wood, fiber, whatever the hell this is. Watch now that I said, I don't think I have it. I'll end up getting it. That's <laughs> the universe seems cruel that way, but, uh, I don't think I have it. Tess will tell me for sure tomorrow, but I'll still take proper precautions. Still wear a mask, keep distant, and hopefully we ride this thing out. But um, last night I had a bit of a scare. I started to get that, you know, that dry sinus feeling you get during, like, the fall and winter. And I was like, uh-oh, is this starting? But, you know. Anyway, let's move on from that. Uh, here's a question I have for an upcoming video. Actually, we might do it in this video, because I have a couple of subjects I want to talk about today. Uh, what defines a Christmas movie? And... Good old William Shatner and George Decay are at it yet again. I want to talk about that. But first, let's get started with this. What to you defines a Christmas movie? Case in point, here's a perfect example. Let me know in the comments below. Do you consider Die Hard a Christmas movie? And someone brought up in, in one of the other vlogs, they watched Die Hard 1 and 2. And I was like, yeah, I haven't watched uh, Die Hard 2 in a while. I watched Die Hard, the original Every year around Christmas. But here's the thing. I do not consider Die Hard a Christmas movie. And I'll tell you why. You get the most enjoyment watching it during Christmas. Particularly on New Year's Eve. Uh, because that's when the movie takes place. New Year's Eve. Um, but Die Hard is not about Christmas. And I think this is an important distinction here. And I think this is where... A lot of movies that are considered Christmas movies aren't really Christmas movies. You get the most enjoyment out of watching them around the holidays, but there some movies aren't really Christmas movies. Die Hard is not really a Christmas movie. Premium watching experience is on Christmas Eve. I'll give it that. But Die Hard's not about the holidays. Die Hard is about Bruce Willis fighting terrorists in Nakatomi Plaza. It just happens to take place during a Christmas party on Christmas Eve. Right? So, you can watch it during Christmas. You get a little, I feel you get a little bit more enjoyment watching it on Christmas Eve. But the movie in and of itself is not about Christmas. It's about fighting terrorists in a, in a uh, L.A. high-rise. Right? Here's another film that I do not consider a Christmas movie, but you get the most out of on Christmas. Oh, by the way, I was goofing around with this thing. Sorry about that. This is this is an old broken tablet mount, by the way, that I was supposed to throw out. Um, tablet mount for the car. Anyway, back to my point. It's a Wonderful Life holiday classic. Uh... Shown every Christmas Eve on NBC here in New York. Um, it's a Wonderful Life is considered a Christmas classic. However, I would argue with you, it is not a Christmas movie. And I'll tell you why. The ending with Clarence and, and 
George Barely and all that takes place Christmas Eve. The climax of the film takes place on Christmas Eve, and It's a Wonderful Life is really kind of a sequel, an unofficial sequel-esque retelling of a Christmas story. You know, whatever needs are Scrooge and all that. I, you, I would argue It's a Wonderful Life is a spiritual sequel to Charles Dickens' A Christmas Story. Uh, excuse me, A Christmas Carol. Christmas Story is most definitely a Christmas movie. But we'll go on to that in a bit. But if you watch It's a Wonderful Life, the vast majority of It's a Wonderful Life is does not take place at Christmas. You know, we go throughout the course of George Bailey's life, how he, uh, how he, uh, is deaf in one ear, uh, how he meets his wife, you know, how they start a family, you know, that whole issue with, uh, uh, the Potter guy. What's the, the guy in the wheelchair? I forget his name. Is something Potter played by Drew Barrymore's. I forget the actor's name, but Drew Barrymore's grandfather, I believe it is, right? It's a Wonderful Life isn't really a Christmas movie. The ending takes place at Christmas. They celebrate Christmas in that movie. But I would argue it's not a Christmas movie. However, you get the most out of it during the holidays. Here's another example of not a Christmas movie, but you get the most out of it during Christmas. Trading Spaces. I love Trading Spaces. Trading Places, you idiot. <laughs> I said Spaces, didn't I? I just said Spaces. Trading Places. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy. The movie does not focus on Christmas. It takes place during the holidays. You know, there's a there's the famous scene with Dan Aykroyd uh, dressed as Santa trying to rob the place. And by the way, get this shit on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Instagram, yeah, but they're both owned by the same thing. I posted, you know, as a joke, and the image of Dan Aykroyd from Trading Places holding a gun to his head as a joke, saying, "God help us, it's the holiday season." That picture got removed. Because it broke community guidelines. I was like, what the fuck? I wasn't threatening anybody. <laughs> it's from Trading Spaces. Uh, trading Places. Why do I keep saying Spaces today? I know why. Because I got space on my mind. Because of the whole Artemis moon mission and all that. That's why I'm doing that. Trading Places. Anyway, it's not a Christmas movie. Maximum enjoyment is to watch it during the holiday season because it takes place during the holiday season. In fact, it takes place over two holidays. It takes place during Christmas and New Year's. But I would argue Trading Places is not a Christmas movie. Ghostbusters 2. Of course, you know we're bringing up Dan Aykroyd. Uh, Ghostbusters 2. Most definitely not a New Year's movie. It's not a holiday movie. The climax takes place on New Year's Eve, particularly New Year's Eve uh, 1989 going into 1990. Right? The film came out before the New Year's Eve of that year. The film came out June. Also, Die Hard, keep in mind, Die Hard came out, uh, was it June or July of... Was it 87 or 88? Right? Ghostbusters came out in June. I think it would have done better had it, had they waited to put it out towards the holiday season of 89. I think it, would, I, it wouldn't have been as crowded as a uh, movie season. But you can watch Ghostbusters 2 any time of the year. Maximum enjoyment is watching it on New Year's Eve because it takes place on New Year's Eve. But it's not really about New Year's Eve. Another film. Here we go. Here's another one. Batman Returns. Not considered really a holiday movie. It's not about hol you know, the, the holidays. Takes place during the holidays. 
yet it's not considered a holiday movie. Just because a movie, summing all this up, 10 minutes into this, summing all this up, just because a movie takes place during the holidays does not automatically make it, quote unquote, a holiday movie. My argument is, is the movie about the holidays or does the movie simply take place during the holidays? Scrooged, Bill Murray, definitely a holiday movie because it's about the spirit of Christmas and, you know, uh, redemption and all that. Uh, a Christmas story. It's about a kid wanting a BB gun for Christmas. <laughs> Uh, National Lampoon's uh, Christmas Vacation, most definitely a Christmas movie. It's about a family getting together for Christmas. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Um, any version of A Christmas Carol. Obviously a Christmas, you know, movie. Elf, which I saw last year. I didn't really enjoy all that much. I know, blasphemy. I just, I just felt Elf was annoying. Christmas movie. Home Alone. One and two. Both take place during Christmas. The spirit of Christmas. You know, family, get together and all that. Key element. But the focus is, uh, you know, a kid being on his own. Just happens to be on his own during the holidays. Would Home Alone still work, though? Here's a, I haven't seen either one in many years. Would Home Alone still work where it done during the summer I don't think so Home Alone is the real question there is Home Alone a Christmas movie takes place during Christmas is it really a Christmas movie there's an interesting question so moving on from that I was reading an article today about William Shatner and George Takei Takei excuse me then again, I'm saying trading spaces instead of trading places, so I don't know. Maybe I do got COVID or whatever, and it's affecting how I think, which is a thing, sadly. George Takai is talking more shit about William Shatner. Here's the thing about this whole thing. I, I don't go looking up this gossip column shit. I, I happen to be on, uh, oh, I forget what fucking website I was on. I don't really go for the whole celebrity gossip shit. I, I, I could give a fuck less. I really could care less. Unless it involves some sort of like sexual assault or something like that. I could care less what actors get along with what other actors. Right? Because Hollywood wants you to think that everyone gets along on set. And everyone, you know, they're all best friends and they're all holding hands and they're all... The reality is anything further from the truth. People don't like each other for whatever reason. People don't get along. People have different ideas and opinions. People come to conflict, you know, whether it's verbal or sometimes physical. The reality is just because you're an actor and working with other actors and you both have names, often there can be a clash of egos. It's just how it is to go... You have to be somewhat, and I, I agree with this statement, you have to be somewhat narcissistic to want to be a big name actor. I think everyone, I, I got to be careful how I use the term narcissist. Because when, you know, when I bring up narcissists, you know, we all think about one certain clearly person who I'm not going to go into. But I think everyone is narcissistic to some level. Right. I think that's part of human nature. You know, um, I don't know anyone who doesn't want to be popular. I don't know anyone who. Do, well, for the most part, there are people who naturally just want to be left alone. Uh, but. I don't know anyone who, you know, during school or, or, or they, especially their younger years, doesn't want to be popular or uh, have positive attention on them. We all crave we all crave that since our childhood. Right since since our infancy, really. Um, you know, if you if you like movies, I think anyone who who has a passion for movies at some point wondered what it'd be like to be an actor. I think that's totally normal. I think that's natural. I I personally think, and this is ain't narcissism. I I personally think being an actor would be an interesting thing. I wondered if I would make a good actor. I think to an extent I would. I think I'd put in the work and effort, but I don't know. 
I trip over my own words. I'm not exactly the most handsome. And not all actors need to be handsome, too. You know, there's there's plenty of parts for normal normal looking people. You know, there, there's that myth that you have to be, uh, uh, you know, a supermodel to be an actor. You don't. <laughs> there's plenty of actors who aren't what I would call, you know, traditionally handsome or attractive or whatever. You know, there's parts for everybody. But what interests me about acting is playing another person, playing a part, creating a character. The fame and fortune, I think that's what drives a lot of people to want to be actors. Hence, somewhat narcissism. But the actual art of acting, of creating and portraying a totally different individual than yourself, that is most definitely uh, art. That's definitely creative. That's definitely, you need talent to do that. Not everyone can do that. Um, but I do think actors, not all of them, some can be a little narcissistic. William Shatner, I feel, most definitely has an ego. And can you blame him? Seriously, having an ego in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, this guy is... Whether you like Star Trek or not, you can't argue that William Shatner is not a shining icon of science fiction. William Shatner is, for all intents and purposes, the actor behind James T. Kirk, a much beloved character. Right? He created that character. Now, have there been other actors that played Captain Kirk? Yes, Chris Pine, and who did a wonderful job, I felt. And uh, I forget the guy who played Kirk in Strange New Worlds. He played at the season finale, and he's going to be in season two. Which I thought, I was like, oh, oh God, the jury's still out on that one. You know? But William Shatner created the character. Well, he didn't create the character. Gene Roddenberry and the writers of Star Trek created the character. But, but William Shatner brought James T. Kirk to life. And Star Trek is a staple. It's one of the biggest franchises out there. You know, next to Marvel and Star Wars and everything. You know, Star Trek is a massive, has a massive following. Here's the thing about that, though. Star Trek, the original series, was 1963, I want to say. If I recall correctly, it's 1963. It premiered just shortly before the Kennedy assassination. September of 1963, if I recall. Might be wrong on that. It might be 62, but I'm almost positive it's 63. No, no, I stand corrected. It is 19... Let's ask Siri. It might be 1966. When did Star Trek first premiere? Here's an answer for 1966. Star Trek was introduced as a live action. 1966. Okay, so I stand corrected. 1966. The reason why I got it confused with the Kennedy thing was because Kennedy really started the space race. And, you know, NASA was launching missions to the moon because of the Kennedy Initiative and Kennedy Space. That's where I was getting my facts mixed up. Okay. So, Star Trek was 1966. I'm really off on my A game today. Today, <laughs> Trading spaces and, and the wrong year of Star Trek. Okay. 1966. Right? We're almost 70 years out from that. I wasn't around in 1966. I wouldn't be born for another 17 years. Um, but Shatner, you know, did his thing on Star Trek. George Takei was part of the cast. Uh, you know, everyone knows the cast of Star Trek. George Takei and Shatner have had issues since then. Uh, 
In fact, um, everyone's had had stuff to stay uh, to say about Shatner and during that time frame. You know, Shatner wanted to be the center of attention. He was the star of the show. Wasn't too crazy about Leonard Nimoy getting attention to Spock. You know, when Spock turned out to be the breakthrough character, so on and so forth. And understandably so, you know, you're you're on this big hit TV show, Star Trek, which actually wasn't that big of a hit originally. It it really gained notoriety after it went off its uh, the air and went into syndication. That's when Star Trek really took off, right? Which, I, as an actor, I could be understandably being pissed because the show's canceled and yet it's in syndication and yet it's doing better than it was when it was on the air. Okay understandably, uh, that would tick me off a little bit too, you know. So, Shatner and Takei, they've had issues. Takei has said he's been a prima donna. James Dohan, who played Scotty, talked shit about Shatner at some point on the Howard Stern show, to the point where Howard Stern was kind of asking uh, uh, James Dohan a lot about Shatner, and James Dohan was kind of getting pissed. Like, you could see this. I've seen this interview, and you could tell James Dohan was like, all right, I'm not here just to shit on Shatner, you know. <laughs> right? Leonard Nimoy said, uh, you know, they had they had a falling out shortly before Leonard Nimoy's death, so on and so forth. <coughs> Here's the thing. In all these these behind-the-scenes gossip talks about, you know, Shatner and all that. I've never once heard Shatner, and I might be missing something. Totally on me if I'm missing something. But I've never once heard Shatner in an interview outright, out of the blue, openly chalk trash about any of his castmates. Right? I never outright heard him just out... Again, I might be missing something. I told... You know, because I'm not this obsessed where I've watched every single interview and and what have you. George Decay right now, seems to be at the point where he's just going out of his way to talk shit about Shatner. You know what I mean? George Decay, like, every opportunity he gets... And the media loves this, too, because the media loves to start shit. There's reporters and interviewers and all that who, look, they're shit stirrers. And they love to be shit stirrers because it gets a good headline and it gets, you know, clickbait and, oh, oh, George Takei doesn't like William Shatner and all this shit. And it sells. Reporters do like to stir the shit pot here, you know. But to me... From my observation, George Takei seems to go out of his way to talk shit about Shatner every chance he gets. George Takei seems like the asshole here in this particular case. And and that's not calling George Takei an asshole. Here's the thing. George Takei has had a rough life. He, you know, he's Japanese-American. He was born during World War II. His family was in uh, the internment camps, you know, for Japanese citizens, which was a really fucked up part of American history. He's gay. And he had to hide that. He had to hide his relationship at the time. He couldn't be openly gay until relatively recently. Right? The guy's had a hard life. Now, the guy has accomplished so much despite all that. The guy's a wonderful actor. He's an icon of the Asian-American acting community. Right? George Takei is a stand-up dude. But in this case, he seems to... Love to talk shit about Shatner every chance he gets. Like, he seems to go out of his fucking way to give Shatner shit. And he relishes in it, too. And it's like, George, you're 85 years old. Shatner's, what, 92? Right? Most of this shit happened in the 60s and 70s. Once, realistically, once the last time you realistically had to work with William Shatner on set every day, it was Star Trek 4, 5 maybe, even Star Trek 6, you two weren't on screen together. Yeah, you, you know, at that point, at that point, <laughs> Sulu had his own ship, the Excelsior. 
I don't even think you guys shared a scene together outside of the view screen in Star Trek VI. The last time you guys were, I, I can recall you being on screen together, maybe Star Trek V, and that was what, 89? That you had to be on the same set in the same room in camera together? Like, what did he fucking do to you? Like, God damn, if he fucking, if he, like, I can understand if he, like, molested you or something, which I'm not accusing anyone of, but I'm saying if he, like, fucking went out of his way to do some fucked up shit to you, I could understand holding a grudge. But... At this point, let it go. You're 85 years old. Shatner's 92. George K. seems to love fucking just shitting on Shatner. And again, Shatner's not perfect. Shatner has an ego. Let's let's be real here. But I'm on Shatner's side on this one here. You know, recently, uh, was it last year? Shatner went into space with the whole Blue Origin, you know, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, space thing. Shatner literally went into space. And I had no issue with that. Yeah, it was a giant PR stunt. But hey, the guy what the guy genuinely went into space. Even though it was, what, for five minutes? That's still more than I have done, right? I'm going over 25 minutes here. I apologize, but hopefully it's interesting. George K went after him for that. I'm like, leave the guy alone. Okay, just shut up. What, you jealous that he went and you didn't? I'm sure, I'm sure Jeff Bezos would happily send you up in a fucking dick-shaped rocket too. And let's be real here. That fucking Blue Origin rocket looks so much like a dick. It's it, 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 Jeff Bezos has got to be trolling people now. You know? Like, really? That's a fucking... That's a giant cock. I'm sorry. That rocket... That, I mean, the rocket in, in Austin Powers. Dr. Evil's rocket in Austin Powers. Which looked like a dick. And it had the you know the rocket boosters as balls. That looked less like a dick than the Blue Origin fucking rocket does. Like, you can't tell me that's not intentional. So Shatner went up to space on a rocket dick. George Takei is going out of his way to be a rocket-sized dick with this shit. Guys, you, 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 you two, and uh, Walter Koning, who shot her famously. You ever see this video? You have to look this shit up. This is funny. It's fucked up, but it's funny. I feel bad for poor Walter Koning here because it's Shatner, George Takei, and Walter Koning who played Chekhov. Right? There's a video of Shatner, like introducing the cast of Star Trek VI, or with some PR stunt or whatever. And he forgot Walter Koning's name. <laughs> He's going around introducing the cast, right? <laughs> and for whatever reason, Shatner forgot Walter Koning's name. And you could see this on the videos, like the gentleman who plays check, and, and, and <laughs> it was a flub up. You know, they're probably not close friends, right? And I felt bad for Walter Koning at that point. I was like, oh, man. That was fucked up, Bill. <laughs> right? But you don't hear Walter Koning constantly talking shit. Like, even Leonard Nimoy and all of them. Yeah, they would joke around and all that. And, uh, you know, you never really fucking... You've never really heard any of the rest of the cast go after Shatner. Yeah, they did have, you know, they did have their issues with the man. As much as George Takei does. You know what I'm thinking? This is my conspiracy. I have no proof of this. 
I think George Decay kind of has a thing for Shatner. I do. I, I'm thinking maybe maybe it maybe George Decay really had a crush or something on Shatner was rejected or or something or whatever because you don't go after someone that much for that long of a period of time without something going on. You move on after a while. Decay like goes out of his way to attack Shatner. And Shatner, of course, he reacts to it, you know, because the media is always, oh, did you hear what George Decay said about this or that? You know, Decay's an instigator in this point. And it, the fact that it's still going on, and these people are, are almost, you know, in their 90s. It's like, let it go, guys. You guys are the last of a dime. And poor, and poor William Koning here is probably going to outlive the two of them. He's sitting there going, no one fucking remembers who I am. <sighs> anyway, this is Al. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys later. Peace.